Hi there everyone, welcome to another gear video on full9.net. If you are watching over on YouTube, uh, first off be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff, or comment, that's the main one these days, helps with the algorithm. Um, if you're watching on the website, thanks very much. For the social media crowd, that link is uh, in the bio slash down below. Now we are looking today at something I've been hoping to take a look at for a while. This is a piece of kit from Varistalika uh, in Finland. Some of you will have heard of them through InRange. They're somewhat well known, but in my opinion, not as well known as they should be. Really good surplus, military surplus uh, gear store. Uh, got all sorts of stuff, but then they also have, on top of the surplus, they have their own line, um, which is where the uh, shirt that we're looking at today comes from. The uh, Siama, Sama, that's how it's pronounced, TST line, that is their own line of it's like a PCU system, for want of a better word, like a whole layering system like Equax or CS95 or PCS. Um, the numbers don't line up to the PCU numbering system. So like this is the level four shirt, for example, um, but it's, you know, it's a uniform. This would be level nine in PCU. It was pretty fortuitous, I have to say, because the owner of Aristolica, uh, Jerry, he happened to find me on Instagram somehow randomly and he messaged me and said hey do you want to take a look at uh, a couple of our shirts um, which was real lucky because I'd been pretty close to just buying some myself I've had my eye on these for a while I think they're really good they you know spoiler alert here yeah good shirt uh, they represent good value good sort of mid to high end kind of price range upper end of the mid bracket kind of thing um, interesting camo finish They've got the M05, which is their woodland, and then this is the M04, the desert variant. Not many people make this stuff, and being able to get it, get this camo in a well-made shirt at a pretty decent price point for a quite well-made brand that's made in Europe, yeah, this is, this is a pretty good prospect. But we're gonna do the usual thing, and go over all the features. I'm gonna start up at the collar here. It's a bit, it's a quite a short collar, um, like a cry collar would be more like that kind of thing. Um, I do prefer a little bit of a higher one, just gives a little bit more protection from sun, from your shoulder straps on your armor, from slings, all that stuff. But on the plus side, it is lined with the t-shirt material, um, which means it's a bit smoother, a bit more comfortable when you do have something pressing it against the neck. Main zip, quarter zip, it is a Opti brand. Not one I'm familiar with massively, but I know it is a good brand. Um, on the inside, you do have this, it's like a storm flap on jacket, but it's uh, that's good to see because it's gonna mean that the inside face of the zip isn't rubbing directly against your skin. Would have been nice to have a little garage here covering up the staple at the base of the zip, but um, you know, it's minutiae, but you know, if you guys have been following me a while, that's the sort of things I look at. Um, the main body, this is a Coolmax 100% polyester fabric. It is super soft and comfortable. Like, it's honestly, it is polyester, but it feels smooth as silk. Very nice. Extremely breathable. Like, this is this is just about as, as fast drying and wicking as a fabric you can get. Really good choice. Um, they've cut in. It's not just a tube of fabric on the torso. They've cut in extra panels on the side for a better fit, actually conform to the human body shape much better in t-shirt material runs under the arms part way down the arm so that underarm area where you're sweating a lot you know, get get some good sweat wicking out of that area arm pockets kind of standard layout wise um, but it's just what you want really end of the day you've got a strip of loop up here for name tapes um, areas down here for your patches i do wish there was a little bit narrower of a gap between the two Again, minutia. Closes with Velcro. Your lanyarding point on the inside. Uh, stitch down on the front. Then you've got pleat slash baffle on the bottom and the rear edge, so it can expand out when needed, but sit flatter when it's empty. Pretty fairly standard size. Tilted in a little bit, so it's pretty easy to access. Good solid design. Can't absolutely nothing to a uh, fault there. Really, the pocket 
elbow pad storage pocket. Similar like something that uh, shows you they've put the fork into this. You see these, uh, you see these horizontal lines running along the elbow pad pockets. And what these are again, pleating, it just means that when there's no padding in, it sits nice and flat. But when you do put the pad in, it can expand outwards. There's extra fabric darted in to that design in two places there, which means that the you don't have to struggle to get an elbow pad in plenty of space on the inside. In terms of compatibility, I've tested it. Arcteryx, uh, the, the recent types, their pads will go in, the Cry, AC, Field, the G3, the G4, they all fit inside here, and then Verastalik has their own elbow pads that can also go inside of these. To access it, just a Velcro opening down here at the bottom, nice and simple. Cuff, very standard affair, you've got a Velcro tab, tighten that up to uh, whichever place you want it. Infinite adjustment, essentially, which is what you want. It's cut lower at the back, much less likely to come untucked on you when you uh, lean over, bend over, stuff like that. Nice and long as well, to just for generally making sure it does stay tucked in. Definitely a nice feature. Nothing much to really mention on the back. Um, the actual camo fabric, this is finished stuff. Military spec fabric, as is the Holtz uh, Sama line. I'm pronouncing that wrong, forgive me. The, the way they have this finish A with the two dots on it, there's like Siamma, it's like with a J and a rolling. I, I can't do it. Anyway, high quality 50 50 polyester cotton, rip stop grid in it. Generally, 50 50 nylon cotton is the preference. That's what American uniforms always use, American manufacturers. But not all poly cotton is alike. There are some really low grade examples of it that some, some of the cheaper commercial brands use, proper, use really bad stuff. This is a lot better uh, poly cotton blend fabric. Stitching throughout, very nice and neat. Uh, you know, the, the actual pattern, the cut of the way the garment's been assembled, pretty impressed by it, I have to say. The elbow pad pocket actually goes up under this seam here rather than just sitting as like a separate island, just as one example get loads of uh, bar tacks and I've checked every point where I would expect there to be uh, stress and for the garment to be pulled and stretched during wear and use and they've got bar tacks on all those points corners of the elbow pad pockets corners where the pocket main pockets are attached uh, all, the, all the key points double stitching and some of the corners of the seams the internal seams yeah flat lock nice and neatly done all good really um, the one thing I would slightly ding the shirt on is the stitches per inch so that's just the number of actual little stitch marks that you, um, <clears throat> that you can see per inch of stitch line on on this shirt it's about seven eight I prefer to see about nine or ten that's what uh, that's what cry do Arcteryx kind of even go above that sometimes so this is a little bit on the lower end of that and why that matters is just for the strength of adhesion of one piece of fabric to another on the garment. Excuse the wind. It's, per, it's definitely good enough for... It's definitely good enough for the intended purpose. It would have been nice to see a bit higher. I do also have the flame-resistant wooden version of that here, which I'm going to get in a second. That has a higher stitch per inch count, which is a good thing, because that is the very much deployment military focused version of this shirt i don't have any concerns this is going to fall apart on you just would be nice to see those sewing machine uh, settings change a little bit on future production if they were to take that bit of advice on board seeing as you know they, these come to about 90 100 pounds once once they've been delivered here to the uk so all in it's about yeah, more 1995 so you know it's on that as I say, it's on the upper end of the sort of mid-price range. It would be nice to see a bit of a higher inch count on the stitching. But as I, as I mentioned, the bar tax, the reinforcement, the overall work that's been put into it by the actual manufacturer, extremely good. Oh, and they, they're made in Estonia. I forgot to say, they're not made in Finland, but they aren't made in China either, which is, you know, it's nice. Uh, it's nice to support European manufacturing rather than Chinese. So I'm going to get out the Woodland one briefly here, just to do a little bit of a comparison. In total, there are three variants of the 
Sama L4 combat shirt available on Brastalico. I've shown you one already, but Desert. This is the flame resistant woodland. The actual main version, which I wish I had, is the non flame resistant in the woodland, which is similar to this in that it has Cordura on the elbows, whereas the Desert one didn't. That just has the Polycon on the elbows. However, obviously, the flame resistant woodland is a, a different main camo fabric, a different torso, more breathable but you lose the flame resistance. The flame resistant one here, this is the seriously hardcore military focused garment. Like if you were Finnish military and Finland got invaded by Russians again, this is the one you'd want to be wearing. Aramid based heavy duty rip stop M05 camo fabric throughout the, uh, the yoke shoulders and arms. Heavier duty on the elbows. As I say, this is 500D Cordura here. So that high wear area, nicely covered, just still got the pleats. Pockets are the same. Um, the cut of the torso, still the same, which is a good thing, because on the desert ones, excellent. Um, but it, this is a heavier, this is going to not be as breathable and wick as fast. This is a heavier, again, flame resistant fabric throughout the entire torso. Rest of the cuts the same. However, interesting to note the stitch per inch, and I'll in a bit of b-roll that can hopefully make it visible stitch per inch throughout the stitching and all the seam lines it's higher on this version um, which is good seeing as this one costs a lot more um, but if you are in europe or any temperate part of the us uh, or any temperate country the version i would recommend is the one i haven't shown you here which is the m05 woodland non-flame resistant costs about the same in the desert has a green, fast drying, wicking fabric in the torso, lighter weight. You know, this one weighs a fair bit more because of the, that heavier, uh, thicker fabric for the flame resistance. Now the natural comparison with these, with the uh, Sama line, is probably gonna be the UF Pro Striker XT Combat Shirt and maybe the Leo Cola, uh, European-based companies. Where do I think they line up? Now I've stated in the past that I think the UF Pro for non-military use, non-deployed serious in theater military use, I think the UF Pro is probably the best combat shirt on the market out of all of them out there. The Sama L4 represents very strong competition to that. Um, the, the polycotton blend versions of the UF Pro cost slightly more than the Sama and they have some extra, they have these stupid extra pockets that has like quasi pals webbing on the forearms, on both forearms as well. Uh, these weird bite flaps on the uh, bicep pockets. I do like the zip closure on the UF Pro. That's nice. Um, it's where most, it's the way most companies are going away from the old Velcro top. Having a zip on the side, it's a bit easier to access versus in like that. It's a bit quicker, simpler, just easier and a bit quieter probably. But these, this design's still great as well. The standard polycotton Sama shirts come in at less money than the UF Pro polycotton, as I say. They're lighter, simpler, just, I would say, design-wise, a little bit better. They don't have the nice merino wool under the arms the UF Pro has. That's a pretty good feature. But, you yeah, know, that pretty much means that in terms of the value you get in, they're basically level pegging, I would say. If you want a good combat shirt, and the finished camos and you like the UF Pro, you're going to like the Sama shirts. Definitely check them out on Brastalika. Great guys, great service from them. Real solid bunch. Honestly, just have to give these a, a big thumbs up. Really like them. Very glad I've got to uh, work with Brastalika to, to show these to you, uh, <clears throat> to you all. So yeah, um, check them out folks, basically. Uh, I'll I'll link Varastalika on the YouTube uh, description. And check out the rest of their Sama lines. Well, they've got the whole system from the, the base layers, the insulation, wind protection, uh, you know, mid-weight kind of jackets, all the way up to heavy-duty snow gear. They've got the combat uniforms. They've got a combat pant as well. It looks really good. And I just, yeah, these, these just represent a rare European-made kind of middle price range, but still high quality, good features. Bit more than Leo Cola, but definitely better materials than Leo Cola. A rare camo, it's hard to get elsewhere. 
if you want to finish camo, this is the one to get. And even if you don't, definitely consider it strongly. Um, cheers for watching, folks. And uh, that's all for now. See you next time.